I've got the top 10 must-add hitters in fantasy baseball coming up next on Beat the Odds. Don't go anywhere. Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another episode of Beat the Odds. I'm going to count down the top 10 hitters that you have to add ahead of week five. If you like this content, then please smash that like button. A special thanks goes to all of our subscribers who have been watching these videos, as you now account for 20% of all viewers. To the other 80% of viewers that haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so as it helps me create these videos for you. Also, leave a comment on a player that you think deserves to be on this list. Do you have a burning fantasy baseball question? Ask me on Q. Go to askmeonq.com slash odds, submit a question, and for a small fee, I will personalize a response and send it to your email. It's that easy to get expert fantasy baseball advice, and it helps support the channel. But wait! Be one of the next 10 to submit a question, and you can do it for free. Go to askmeonq.com slash odds now. With that being said, let's get into it. At number 10, we have Blaze Alexander. 10% uh, own, 8 runs, 3 homers, 12 runs batted in, a stolen base, and a 340 average so far this season. It is funny how a big game can thrust a role player into the spotlight. Cue up Blaze Alexander. Cool name aside, he has been a productive hitter when he has been given the opportunity, as in the grand slam that he had hit in the Diamondbacks' 17-1 slug pest victory over the Giants. This is a short-term ad only, of course, once Geraldo Perdomo gets back, Alexander will lose his appeal as he will likely be returning back to the bench. Let's go to number 9. We have Brian De La Cruz. 22% owned, 9 runs, 4 homers, 11 runs batted in, a stolen base, and a 286 average so far this season. De La Cruz has proven to be one of the only bright spots in Miami so far. For a team that struggles and is struggling out of the gates, it helps to have a player provide a little bit of consistency to the batting lineup. De La Cruz has done just that and he's now slotted himself into the top third of the lineup on a regular basis. Whether he stays there will depend on whether or not he can improve on his 1.2% walk rate so far this year. Moving on to number 8, we have Ahmed Rosario. 42% owned, 6 runs scored, 2 homers, 10 runs batted in, 2 stolen bases, and a 333 average. Rosario is starting to make a bit of a splash in Tampa Bay. His ability to make solid contact with the baseball has led the teams to put him in more productive spots in the lineup. He's another one that hasn't been taking a whole lot of walks, and his lack of defense puts a damper on his playing time. But as long as he's out there, he's worth a play in any lineup. Moving on to number 7, we have Mitch Hanniger. 33% owned, 10 runs scored so far this season, 3 homers, 13 runs batted in, and a 292 average. Mitch just knows how to hit. He has been the lone bright spot in one of the league's worst offenses so far this year. The key thing there is that he has earned a spot in the middle of this lineup, and I think the Seattle Mariners are grossly underperforming. Should the big bats at the top of the lineup start to heat up, Hanniger should be in for some real run scoring opportunities. Let's go to number 6, we have Jose Caballero, 43% owned, 7 runs scored so far this season, a homer, 8 runs batted in, and 6 stolen bases and a 286 average. Caballero has been on my radar for a few weeks now. His stack cast profile is starting to reveal what type of hitter he, that we should expect from him for the rest of the year. He doesn't come with a whole lot of thump in his bat, but he's using most of his talents both in the batter's box and on the base pass. Double digit home runs may be asking too much, but I believe that 40 steals is certainly attainable. Let's go to number 5. We have Ryan Jeffers, 29% owned, 8 runs scored, 3 homers, 11 runs batted in, and a 255 so, uh, average so far this season. I have admittedly been a little hesitant in jumping all in on Ryan Jeffers with his recent production because it does seem like it's, bit, uh, it's based on a little bit of luck. When you do scroll back a year though, you'll see that he has posted a very useful 286 at bats, getting 14 homers and an OPS of 859. He does make this list because he's now hitting in the top third of the order in the Twin Cities. He's going to be as valuable as long as he stays there. Let's go to number four. We have Brett Beatty, 20% owned, seven runs scored so far this season, a homer, nine runs batted in, and a 305 average. I really like Brett Beatty. Now, I should mention that StatCast does not, and the team hasn't been committed to Beatty being the primary third baseman until this year, but I still like him. I think this is the year that the Mets' first round pick starts to show what he can do. I'm looking at his current OPS at 732 and thinking that that could be the floor for him this season. 
Moving on to number three, we have Jesse Winker, 27% owned, 12 runs scored so far this season, two homers, six runs batted in, two stolen bases, and a 345 average. The stolen bags are not part of Winker's game. The power, though, is. After a couple of years hitting around the Mendoza line, he's back to relevancy with an OPS just south of 1,000. His resurgent has been both a boon for fantasy managers and probably more so for his team. The Nationals are looking like a very dynamic team with the likes of Abrams, Winker, and Lane Thomas at the top of the order. Let's go to number two. We have Jake Fraley, 43% owned, 13 runs scored so far this year, a homer, four runs batted in, five stolen bases, and a 378 average. Let's continue our trend of left-handed batters with Jake Fraley. The pros are obvious here. He plays in the sandbox at Great American Ballpark. He can contribute in every category. He hits in the middle of the lineup, and he plays nearly every day. Now, he doesn't hit the ball all that hard, but he doesn't have to in order to get it out uh, at Cincinnati. You're going to have to sit him versus the odd lefty, but he's going to be worthwhile when he does play. And finally, at number one, we have Ryan O'Hearn, 44% owned, 11 runs scored so far this season, four homers, six runs batted in, and a 288 average. The Orioles are an offensive juggernaut, and one aspect that we don't talk about nearly enough is Ryan O'Hearn. Being the team's primary DH gives a 30-year-old left-hander a lot of value. He still sits occasionally versus lefties, but he has been hammering righties all year. I look at K-Wraith a lot with sluggers like O'Hearn, and to my surprise, he has kept it remarkably low at only 10.5%. And that's going to do it here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I am going to sign off for now, but I will catch you guys on the next episode.